Well, I've got a massive amount of crypto airdrop alpha for you today, so let's not waste any time and jump right in, starting off with the biggest announcement from today, which is that the parcel token allocation is now checkable. So you can go to the parcel points page and see how many tokens you are going to be getting. Now, this airdrop is going to be claimable tomorrow at 1 p.m. UTC, and it's going to be live trading on OKX, but also on Solana DEXs. Now, I've got a couple of points to make about this. So let's start off by talking about the actual allocation details. Until today, we didn't know if this was going to be linear or tier based, but now we actually have the breakdown of how they allocated the token. And so they split users into three groups. The top five wallets were not linear. They were manually allocated and they each got at least 1 million parcel tokens. And if we look at the actual points breakdown of those top five wallets, you can see that none of them actually got any significant amount of their points from referrals. So these are all either whales or VCs or something like that. Then at the bottom end of the allocation, you had to have a minimum of 6,000 points in order to get any allocation from this air drop and if you had between 6,000 and 40,000 which is 27 percent of the total wallets you are getting 20 parcel tokens and the way that they set up this allocation is to give a basic tier based drop to the people at the lower end of the spectrum maybe people that came in in the last few weeks with just a modest amount of money to earn some points and then of course they weeded out people that were sibyls and if you had less than 6,000 points you didn't get any allocation at all and then the middle chunk of this which is the majority of the wallets almost 50% of the total wallets from 40,000 points to 1.3 billion points these people had a linear distribution based on the number of points that they had at the bottom end of the spectrum they weeded out people that just had a minimal amount of points that were maybe trying to multi-wallet or sibyl this and just coming in with a couple of dollars for a couple of weeks trying to get an allocation based on a tier based system so 25% of the total wallets that were farming this and there was around 250,000 wallets didn't get any allocation at all and then in terms of giving the same tier based allocation for 6,000 to 40,000 points, I think it is fair to have a tier based allocation for that bottom level because if it's perfectly linear, these people would probably be getting less than 20 parcel tokens. I think maybe they could have had one or two more tiers in this because that's a pretty big difference and that's 27% of the total wallets that are only getting that small allocation of 20 parcel tokens. And then having a linear distribution for the vast majority of people along with that special allocation to the top five wallets, I feel like they're trying to strike a balance between rewarding people that committed millions of dollars to the platform and then also giving people at the bottom end of the spectrum a chance to get some allocation. Now there's never going to be an airdrop allocation that makes literally every single person happy but honestly I feel like this is relatively fair and while some people have been chatting in my discord about how they don't like the fact that this airdrop was announced beforehand when the actual date was going to be giving people time to come in at the last minute with a large amount of capital and work their way up the leaderboard I do agree that in some ways that disadvantages early users, but they did have those loyalty points boosts for people that had been around at certain snapshot dates. And I feel like Parcel did the best that they could given the circumstances. Of course, they need to grow their protocol and the TVL, and they're trying to run a business. Anyways, that is my take. Of course, feel free to disagree. And if you want to let me know down below in the comments what you think about this airdrop, I will definitely read those. Now, moving forward, the total supply of the token is 1 billion, and they just allocated 8 percent to this initial drop but there's going to be another round of the parcel airdrop moving forward which supposedly is going to be even larger than the one that's coming through tomorrow so i will definitely be taking my hoa nft staking it and taking some of the parcel allocation that I'm getting and staking that as well. Because Parcel has confirmed that those activities, as well as obviously continuing to trade and LP on the platform, will increase allocations in round two of the airdrop. All right, let's move now to another airdrop for Celestia and Atom Stakers, among a few other asset classes as well. So this is the SOAR airdrop. Now this was previously announced, but now Milk Tia holders are going to be included in this. And you did need to be staking a relatively significant significant amount of capital in order to qualify. So a minimum of 40 Atom tokens or a minimum of 40 TIA tokens and or 20 Milk TIA. And the snapshot for all of this, by the way, was January 5th. And so out of my TIA staking wallets, I think only one or two of them is going to qualify because of the date that the snapshot was and the capital requirement. But stay tuned for more information on this, including when the token is actually going to be claimable. 
All right, next up, if you participated in the Subquery Networks Seekers Challenge, you can go and claim your airdrop. I did not participate in this, so I'm not getting any allocation, but if you did, the tokens are now claimable. There's a blog post breaking down exactly what the supply is, how many people qualified. And so if you've never heard of this before, probably no point in checking, but if you do know what I'm talking about because you were trying to get this one, go and check to see if you can claim some tokens now. All right, next up, let's talk about a potentially underfarmed airdrop opportunity. And this was shared by Steven from the DeFi Dojo also known as the calculator guy. And just generally speaking, I gotta say, this is a smart guy. You should give him a follow and you should definitely listen to the stuff he has to say about yield farming and airdrop farming because he's got some great strategies. And so when he's coming out and saying that there is potentially an underfarmed airdrop opportunity that could yield a five figure airdrop for the average farmer, I would say it's important to actually listen to what he has to say. Now he is talking about Aperture Finance. So they have a points campaign on right now that is only running for a couple more weeks until the token actually drops. And aside from a few minor points boosts for doing some social stuff, the main things that you need to do are to swap, to provide liquidity on the platform, and to use their strategies, including the auto rebalancing or recurring rebalancing strategies. Now, I'll leave a link to DeFi Dojo or Calculator Guy's video right here. He breaks it down really in depth in terms of the best way to optimize your points. And apparently that is by using the recurring rebalance strategies. And you can do this with a small amount of capital. Even if you have just like $10 or $20, you can put it into this, earn a decent amount of points. And then if you provide some LP and make a few swaps as well, you might actually still have a decent chance of getting a solid allocation from Aperture Finance, even though there's only a few weeks left in their campaign. All right, let's move now to Eigenlayer because tomorrow they are removing the deposit caps for liquid stake tokens. So you can actually go and restake with Eigenlayer natively and you can deposit things like Lido staked ETH, Rocket Pool ETH, Coinbase ETH, etc. Now in terms of why you might do this, I've had a few people ask me that and the TLDR is that basically if you go directly to the source with Eigenlayer, you're guaranteeing that you're getting the full points per ETH that you restake and also you're removing at least one or two layers of smart contract risk because if you go directly to the source, Eigenlayer itself would have to rug in order for you to lose your capital versus if you're going with a liquid restake token, then that's an additional level of smart contract risk that's being stacked on top of it. And then if you're taking those liquid restake tokens and using them in DeFi to leverage up with apps like Pendle or Gearbox Finance and other options out there, then you're stacking even more smart contract risk on it. However, if you are comfortable with those additional risks, I would say that it doesn't necessarily make sense to restake natively with Eigenlayer because the incentives are just so much better if you go with liquid restake tokens. So I'm talking about things like EtherFi or Puffer Finance, and Puffer Finance also has a 5x points boost on new deposits right now. Other restaking protocols like KelpDAO and Renzo also have similar incentive structures. And so personally, in terms of my approach to farming the Eigenlayer airdrop and the restaking meta, I restaked natively with Eigenlayer months ago, back when they opened up and there was no LRT options. But since these LRTs have come on the scene, I've been allocating my capital to these and then I've actually been pivoting to leverage up on those positions to get even greater exposure. So I've become, I guess, slightly more degen as time goes on as I'm trying to increase my points count for all of these airdrops, and as I'm realizing that you can now get multi airdrop qualifiers. Because let's say, for example, you restake with EtherFi or Swell, and then you deposit it into the Swell L2, that is gonna earn you like five or six airdrops from doing that. Or if you take your restake tokens onto a layer two, like mode, and then you leverage up on them, you can get additional exposure to eigenlayer points, to LRT points, and then also to the mode L2 and all of the DeFi apps on it. And the same thing applies to scroll. You can do this on other networks as well. So I would say that even though the restaking cap is being lifted tomorrow, there's better ways that you can farm multiple airdrops simultaneously and increase your capital efficiency. All right, next up, let's move to the Aptos ecosystem with Liquid Swap. So if you visit the Liquid Swap page now, you'll notice there's a button up here that says airdrop. And if you click on that, it's going to ask you to connect a couple of wallets. So you can connect an Aptos wallet, a Solana wallet, and an Ethereum wallet right now. Currently, there's actually no airdrops claimable, but if you are interested in Aptos ecosystem airdrops, I think it probably makes sense to go and connect a wallet. And then if there's more news on actual claimable tokens, 
I'll bring you those updates here. Okay, now let's move to the Solana ecosystem. So Sharky, which is an NFT DeFi platform where you can take out loans against NFTs, they are dropping the Shark token tomorrow on Jupiter's launchpad. So you can go connect your wallet and see if you're gonna be eligible for any tokens. For some reason, this wallet is not eligible, even though I did stake Jupe and vote on all of the proposals. So I'm not exactly 100% sure what's going on here. I found this guy on Twitter that staked 50,000 Jupe and is getting an allocation of four shark tokens. A bunch of people in my Discord have also said that even though they stake Jupe and vote with it, they're not getting any allocation. So a little bit of an inconsistency here. And then in terms of the tokenomics, apparently the team is getting a massive supply with basically little to no vesting schedule. So we'll see what happens with this one. I mean, if anyone actually does get some shark tokens and you can claim them, free money is free money, as I like to say. All right, let's move now to the Omni Network. They just confirmed today that the token is going to be claimable on April 17th. So congratulations to everyone getting this airdrop. I talked about it last week. You can check the eligibility criteria. I'll leave a link down here. And if you are eligible, you can claim your token. Looks like in a couple of days. All right, next up, let's talk about Mode. So this meme coin, Mochad, launched their airdrop last week and they dropped it to the top 5,000 wallets on the Mode L2. Now it looks like they're gonna be doing another round of the airdrop to people that diamond handed airdrop one. So if you didn't sell, and I think they hinted also if you purchased some of this token, you might get another allocation of the airdrop this week. And then speaking of mode, this L2 has been steadily climbing up the TVL rankings. It's actually approaching Linea and probably will pass StarkNet at some point soon. So I've been bullish on mode and been talking about it for a few months now. And these DeFi TVL rankings are looking pretty juicy for a token that should be dropping at some point within the next three weeks, let's say. All right, another token is now claimable for people that are participating in the Archway Drop Camp. So I have shown you every step of the way what to do to follow along with this. And if you have been doing that, you would have claimed your astronomy patch last week. And now you'll notice there's a little button here that you can click to claim some Astro Vault tokens. So these tokens are allocated to people that stake the Arch token, that have Archway domains, and that are participating in the drop camp. Now, currently the website's being super glitchy. I haven't been able to claim. Some people earlier this morning from my Discord did claim, and they got a decent allocation. So looks like this is the first of multiple airdrops from the Archway drop camp, and I'm excited to see where this one goes next. All right, next, I wanted to talk about this tweet from Vasu Crypto. So I think this is actually pretty interesting because it's looking at the aftermath of the Tensor airdrop. So let's take a look at screenshot one. Before Tensor dropped, it had 70% of the Solana NFT market share. And then after Tensor dropped, 11.41% and Magic Eden now has 83.69%. So what does this tell us? Well, honestly, it makes me a little bit afraid for the future of airdrops when there's competition in the market. So with Parcel, for example, there is no competition. There is no direct application that is competing for Parcel's market share. But with NFT exchange platforms like Tensor and Magic Eden, since these are more or less completely interchangeable, anyone with a decent amount of soul is just going to be a mercenary with their capital and go wherever the incentive structures are best. And so if Tensor has already dropped their token, some people weren't happy with the initial allocation. They've all just moved their soul over to Magic Eden and started farming Magic Eden diamonds in this airdrop. But what makes me nervous is that other projects that haven't launched their tokens yet could see this dynamic playing out and could decide to delay their airdrops or to potentially not drop a token at all or just to keep stringing people along with point systems because they realize that sometimes if you drop a token, if people aren't happy with it, and if there is actually a direct competitor in the market, then you are not only going to lose all of your market share, but you've also just given away a significant percentage of the value of your app or protocol to airdrop farmers, and then they just immediately went ahead and left. So we'll see how this dynamic plays out. I think it's going to be interesting. It's not that the airdrop is the only factor at play here with this shift in market share, but it is definitely a major part of it. All right, next up, I've got a bunch of Galaxy Quests that you can complete now that are gonna earn you some rewards or some airdrops. So let's start with this one from 
from Ethereum Towers. Now, Ethereum Towers is a metaverse project in the Ethereum ecosystem. It's been around for a little while building and they're going to be launching officially this year. And while technically not exactly an airdrop, they currently have a Galaxy Quest on right now with a bunch of social tasks like following, liking some stuff on Twitter and then joining their Discord and getting some roles. And if you complete these tasks, which by the way, not many people are doing, so these are the types of lotteries that you actually have a decent chance of winning. But if you complete these tasks, you have a chance to win 1000 USDC and a luxury apartment NFT from this metaverse project. So they've got three prizes, so three chances to win this. 1000 USDC obviously is nice. And then these luxury apartment NFTs have a floor price of 0.21 ETH. So I would say given the low barrier to entry, the relatively small number of people that are actually participating in this and the significant value of the prize, this is actually a pretty solid Galaxy campaign that you should probably hop on. All right, next up, there's another Galaxy campaign on from Mitosis. They've confirmed that if you complete these quests, you will earn a share of the Morse airdrop. However, and hold on to your hats, this is going to be a 20 week campaign. Yes, you heard that correctly, 20 weeks. So if you have maximum patience to farm an airdrop like this, and you're willing to participate in it for the next 20 weeks, which honestly in crypto is like five years, then I'll leave a link to this down below and you can check it out. Next up, this Galaxy Quest is from the Build on Bitcoin team. They are going to be having an airdrop. I don't think I've spoken about them before, but they also have a couple of Galaxy Quests on, so I'll leave a link to this right now. All of these things that they have right here are social tasks, but of course, if you wanna get a larger allocation for this airdrop, what it's really gonna boil down to is TVL by actually depositing the assets. And then finally, if you're trying to farm the Hyperlane airdrop, there is a quest on, it's not actually from Hyperlane, it's from GetMint, but it's in partnership with Hyperlane. But in order to complete the quest, you do actually have to make a bridge transaction using a Hyperlane NFT. So I would say it makes sense to do this because you'll at least get one more transaction for Hyperlane. And then if this OAT and the points for doing this are actually worth anything, that's kind of a bonus. All right, two more quick things. There's this task that you can complete for the BearChain testnet. I haven't spoken about BearChain in a while, but they've got a quest on the honey jar. And if you complete all of these tasks in the next one day and nine hours, you can earn this little wag me badge right here. Bears are going to make it. And then finally, I haven't actually spoken about this before, but if you want to get a free airdrop from Banter Bubbles, they're dropping a meme coin called Gummy to people that leave the Banter Bubbles app open on your phone or your computer. So the way that it works is you have to actually leave it open in order for the score to count up. So if I click off this tab and then come back to it, it wasn't accumulating additional points while I was gone. So it actually has to be up and alive in order for you to earn points. But once you do start collecting points, it asks you to connect a Solana wallet. And then this is going to be dropping, I think on the 20th of April. So you have a few days left to try and farm this one. I'm not sure if it's actually gonna be worth much. Probably not, but it's a pretty low barrier to entry. And if you have a second device that you can just kind of throw this up on and leave it running in the background, well, not in the background actually, in the foreground, then you can potentially get some free money from this. Also the Banter Bubbles app is a great way to visualize the state of the crypto markets right now. And it's kind of funny, I'm just noticing that a bunch of these random bridge tokens that you would use if you were farming like Hyperlane or Layer Zero are actually way up today on a relatively red day. Anyways, that is it for today's Airdrop Alpha. Loads in there, hopefully you found this useful as always. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.